Good morning you lovely lot, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave Keith. this is Avernus Biker Lifestyle. Now if you're new to the channel, what it's all about is reselling to fund your lifestyle. And what I mean by that is uh, my business is I take items from one market, whether it be car boot sales, charity shops, auctions, and sell them online to make a profit. That's how I run my business and that's how I make a living. Now just recently we've had loads and loads of feedback on the channel about what you'd like to see. And uh, what today's video is about is one of those uh, people that have got in contact and asked that they want to see a picking video just to see how I run my stock system and basically what's going on. It's been a pretty good week so far this week, some uh, high hitters as far as values are concerned. So without further ado, I'm going to strap the GoPro to my head, take you into the stock room, pick some orders and show you what's going on. Let's get it. So we've got 11 orders for a value of just under £600. These are orders that have come in since midday on Monday. It's now Wednesday morning. And first up, we've got a vintage Othello game. 3B. It's down here. And what I'll do as I'm going through this, I'll put up on screen how I operate my uh, stocking system. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I use the SKU field when I'm setting up my listing to note down the stock location of the item, what date I actually listed it and the value. So that's all the uh, key information that, uh, that I need. So I don't know if you can see this, when I actually go to my phone, when I'm picking my orders, the custom label is the same as the SKU. Uh, you'll see the location of that Othello game, which is 3B, just there. So this is racking one, two, three, and then shelf B. You'll notice on the boxes as well, if there's a box, obviously I'll number that as well. So if it was in that box, it'd be three C1. And then on the end, the amount I paid for it. So in the case of this Othello, two pound. It just keeps everything uh, nice and easy to find. So it speeds up the picking process. Since there's nothing worse, if you get over a certain amount of listings, there's nothing worse than spending a lot of time looking for stuff when you could be packing it, getting it out the door and moving on to your next uh, sourcing adventure okay next up this is something that i've been sitting on for a while but uh, i haven't minded because it's a relatively high value item this is before actually i uh, started noting how much i paid for it so one c2 c2 <clears throat> so just again this is in 5a which is down here listed this on the 20th of the 8th so not been in stock long at all and i paid 10 pound for it Scramble one A. Sale of the week. I know I just put this here, five B. Trust the old screwball scramble one A. So rather than bore you with going through all these orders, um, like I say, it's a really, really straightforward system. My racking consists of uh, seven racks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I use seven for goods in mostly. So on the listing, the screwball scramble was 1A. So that's rack one, shelf A, which is the bottom shelf. And I listed it on the 28th of July and it cost me two pound and this one's going out for 13.99 i think some postage on that as well uh, but that that really is as simple as it is so th this is is really really scalable as well what i wanted to do from the get-go is make sure that uh, I, I could do this part of the process really really quickly uh, it's it's difficult to do after the fact so if you're considering a stocking system like this it's as well to do it from from early doors and then just build on to it because you can probably imagine if you were to do it retrospectively then it's going to be very very difficult to catch up i mean it, it obviously it's doable but it's a case of playing catch up with yourself or taking a day out to create your stocking system it's like with all things with your business just try and think two steps ahead can you deal with some growth whether it be slowly or quickly what does that growth look like uh, as far as uh, obviously your stock's concerned and how you manage it and most importantly and one thing that i'm, I'm really working on myself is managing 
time as well. So if you can make any part of your selling process a more streamlined and quicker, it frees up your time to concentrate on the things that are going to earn you money. So these are the items we've got going out today. In no particular order. First off, we've got the Othello game that I picked first. I paid £2 for that, and that's going out for £13.50 and free postage. Right, Jackie, I got this the two at the same time for £7. Uh, so obviously £3.50 for this jacket. They look very, very similar. This is going out for £27.50 uh, plus £6.99 postage. And I might fill in the weight of it just get away with it being under two kilos so it's going to be 2.95 to send so it ekes out a little bit more profit on the postage as well next up this is a leapfrog water and cow vegetable garden educational toy i picked up a load of these all at once on a supermarket clearance i paid if memory serves 16 pound for them i have to say if memory serves because this is prior to me actually putting the cost of what i paid for it on my stocking system so 16 pound for that and not massive profit in these but um it's going out for 27.50 plus an unusual three pound 10 postage I'm not sure why i put that, that kind of postage on it but there you go unfortunately that comes in at just under two kilos and it fits in a small part a small parcel box as well so nice and cheap to send always looking out for sourcing opportunities and these came from aldi i priced these at 16.99 because unfortunately the, the, the price is on them and they're not stickers but i got these on clearance they were five pound fifty so what i've done i've uh, sold them at 16.99 and put 6.99 postage on them i've got about six or seven of them this is the last one they've sold really really quickly so the, the point i'm trying to make on that is just think outside the box as far as your sourcing is concerned don't just look at all the sources that other people other people do think outside the box as well think about expanding your retail arbitrage investigation if you will to other supermarkets apart from the uh, the big ones because there's deals to be had out there don't I don't think there was a, a precedent for these. There was similar types of machine, but it's a, a mini cutting machine for crafters, like for doing their birthday cards and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I know that there is a market for this type of thing. Uh, so if there's something similar out there, and if this is much cheaper than what is the, the things that are selling regularly, then check it out, chance, chance your hand. Like I say, for, for five pound, that's turned into a reasonable profit. Nothing to be sniffed at, the, the older Scrabble games uh, i know you can pick up the new versions really really cheaply for about 14 15 quid delivered now but the old versions people like them as well because as i've said uh, before the older vintage toys and games they tend to be a bit sturdier everything's so cheaply made these days and it's lightweight easily breakable and it just feels tacky the older versions gen generally just have a bit more substance to them so that's why they're appealing to people so this uh scrabble i paid two pound for it and it's going out for nine pound £9.99 plus £3.99 postage which is virtually the price you can get a brand new one for, uh, for in the supermarket these days. Now if you've been watching my videos for a while uh, I won't open this up because the lid's a pain in the backside to get back on. Probably within the last two to three weeks I picked up this typewriter. I picked it up in a rush. I didn't realise that it had a bit of damage to the corner and I didn't realise that one of the catches were, were, was missing. So what I initially thought was going to be a decent £30 profit I've had to under price it quite considerably because of the damage even so I've still made money on this so uh, just because something's damaged or missing parts if it's a high value item or a track record of selling for good money do your research anyway when you check in the sold completes on items also look at the items that are being sold for spares and repairs to see how much they're going for and uh, just recently I have sold a VHS DVD recorder combi I brought it home tested the VHS side wasn't accepting the tapes at all. Uh, I paid £10 for it for a charity shop and I, my eyes really lit up because the comps on it were £150. So I was very excited about it. Got it home, completely untested. It was sold to me as untested, which is fair enough. Tested it out, found out that it had this issue and I listed it for spares and repairs and it's still sold for £55. It sold locally, the guy came to collect it, but even so I still had a bit of postage on top of it as well. So don't rule out things that are high value but the broken or missing parts 
do your research guys it's absolutely everything the, the more opportunity you get to eke out profit from items then the better it's going to be for you long term i digress anyway <laughs> for this typewriter i paid five pound and it's going out for 19.99 plus 8.99 postage so even though it's damaged should i say it's the, the typewriter itself still works it needs a new ribbon but i mentioned that as well but even with a couple of uh, bits of damage to it i'm still making profit on it now this is something I'm definitely going to have to put up on the screen because I'm not taking it out of the box. It's a fragile item. I shall put it just about there. This is a, a collectible clock. Very, very fancy, very ornate. Uh, I paid, again, this is prior to me <laughs> putting the uh, the values. It's everything I've said about my stocking system so far. I'm kind of undermining it a little bit because some of this stuff that I'm picking predates me putting the, the last part and probably the most crucial part of information on my stocking system. And that's obviously how much I paid for it. I'm very, very confident I paid no more than five pound for this though. Uh, this clock, it's, um, I'm not entirely sure who made this. It might be on some of the pictures, which I'll uh, put up if it is. Uh, but it's like I say, collectible uh, collectible clock in ceramic. Paid five pound for it, and it's going out for forty seven ninety nine plus free postage. I have sat on this for a little while, but it was one of those items that uh, I kind of thought that uh, even if I have to sit on it till Christmas, it'll still go for good money. So that's obviously a very good margin there. I did say very very recently, it might have even been uh, my last video before the live uh, that this wouldn't hang around for long. The Sony DAB docks iPhone docks, DAB radio, and all the fancy bits and pieces on it, alarm clock radio, and it's got its remote with it as well. I paid up a little bit for it at £10, but I knew this was going to be a solid seller. I think on the video that I made off the back of that, I mispriced this slightly on the valuation, but it sold for £29.99 plus £4.99 postage. Now, this is head and shoulders over everything else this week as far as the sale of the week is concerned and it's the perfect example of what i was saying earlier about the you should never rely on what's on the box being what's in the box this paid off big style when i saw this on the charity shop charity shop shelf that's what i was looking at the jvc stereo that i just assumed that was what was in it and um, obviously i was never going to leave it at that it was just as a before i even picked it up got on my phone and this stereo was coming in at i think it was around about the 60 maybe 70 pound mark and this was valued at 25 pound on the shelf so i was always going to look at it but when i looked in the box i found out it was actually the stereo that was taken out of the car to fit this jvc one initially my heart dropped until i actually did my research on that stereo as well and it turned out for just for the head unit which was all that was in this box from the it was a nissan and it kind of fits in a i don't know which model of car it came out of but it fits in a few different nissans i checked the item code on the completed and i undervalued this at 175 pound and it sold within 24 hours i paid 25 pound for it the charity shop were absolutely over the moon they made what they considered a substantial substantial sale you can't argue with that 25 pound into 175 pound plus postage i put 8.99 postage on that as well and i'd be surprised if that's anything more than a, a small parcel so fantastic profit and the best example i could possibly give of don't always assume what's on the box is what's in the box two more items to go Tony screwball scramble it's always a, a, a solid pickup screwball scramble and this is also one of the games where the older more vintage versions sell for more than the the newer versions again going back to what i was saying about the uh, uh, vintage stuff just feeling a bit more substantial and not not as cheap as cheap and tacky as the cheaply made newer stuff a good solid sale again paid two pound for this version and that's going out for 13.99 plus 2.99 postage now last on the list today i'm gonna to have to pick up the camera because it's absolutely massive this is also a very very good big hit big big profit item as well so this stereo here it's a technics obviously stack system the model i'll put on the screen somewhere around here now obviously this is going to be a pain in the chuff to, to box up it's going to be heavy and it's going to be expensive to carry around that doesn't really matter because i paid 12 pound for it that was from uh, the giant car boot sale actually really landed on it well it's got everything with it it's remote it's uh, all its cables and it was all tested perfectly there's a little bit of damage to the corner of one of the speakers but the speaker itself uh, still works perfectly well i paid 12 pound for it and that's going out for 149.90 and again 8.99 postage on that as well uh, 
it may well get lucky and it be under 15 kilos so it'd be uh, pretty cheap to, to send but even so it's not i'm well into profit as you can imagine 12 pound into 150 pound plus postage it's certainly nothing to be sniffed at so as you can see it's not been the busiest of weeks as far as number of orders is concerned but 500 pound in less than 48 hours who can complain about that i've had busier weeks and i've had slower weeks particularly last week last week just sucked for a lot of reasons uh, but you got to fight through uh, situations like that uh, but if i'm sending out less orders for equal or greater value than sending a lot of the orders out then just by the simple logic it frees up more of my time to, to get out sourcing and look for those higher ticket items so i'm going to get all this uh, wrapped up now and wrap up the video after that <laughs> Took a bit of wrap in, I tell you. <laughs> Getting a bit of a sweat on now. Weighing in at 22.9 kilos and obviously a very large box. That's been the biggest one for a while, but 12 pound into 175 pound. I'm not going to be grumbling at that. I'll wrap the video up there, guys. A big shout out to Mohammed for the, uh, the question that prompted this video. Um, basically how I did my my stocking system. If you found videos like this useful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel, it helps us reach more people. And like I say in all of my videos, uh, the reason I do it is to uh, help people uh, find a way that they can make an extra source of income. And basically if I help just one person out of financial difficulty, then that's, that's plenty reward enough for me. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell will give you a notification of next time I post a video up. If you want to find out the products I use for packing and reselling in general. In the description of this video, there's a, a, a set of links for where you can get all that uh, good stuff from. This channel is driven by you guys. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments about how I run my business or reselling in general, leave them in the comments section of this video and I'll, uh, I'll do my very best to answer the questions. If I don't know the answer myself, I'll put effort into finding out for you as well. Thanks very much indeed for sticking with the channel, guys. It really is appreciated. I've been Dave Keith, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.